Hey class, we're going to be looking at the book of First and First and Second Thessalonians uh, right now. And uh, if you want to pull up your PowerPoint, you should have it there uh, to go along with me. Uh, as usual, we'll be diving in, looking at the author and audience. We'll look at the purpose and themes of these books, and we're going to be looking at these books together. So, in terms of uh, the author, audience, and dating, uh, we have multiple authors listed, but um, Paul is uh, can certainly be considered the primary author. First uh, Thessalonians chapter one, verse one: Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy. Um, and we have that same greeting in Second Thessalonians chapter one as well. Um, so Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy. Um, Paul is the main author, and we uh, take that based on the use of the first person personal pronoun used throughout that being I. And so in First and Second Thessalonians, we see that a lot. Uh, Paul being the first person mentioned there. Uh, leads us to believe that Paul is the main author. And so Sylvanus and Timothy surely worked with him, but Paul is the one writing this out. Uh, also, chapter 3 of 2 Thessalonians, verse 17, says, I, Paul, write this greeting with my own hand. And so, uh, in terms of recipients, mostly Gentiles living immorally. And we see that in 1 Thessalonians, chapter 1, verse 9, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 3 through 8. And then the occasion here is that Paul planted the church at Thessalonica uh, on his second missionary journey, and we get that from Acts chapter 17, verses 1 through 9. Uh, but Paul most likely wrote these letters from Corinth responding to Timothy's report. Uh, and you can see that in 1 Timothy, I'm sorry, 1 Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 6. But now that Timothy has come to us from you, and has brought us the good news of your faith and love. And so, again, Paul gets this report from Timothy, and that precipitates the writing. And um, so we also see in Acts chapter 17, verse 15, that after Paul reached Athens, he sent for Silas and Timothy. Uh, but they probably didn't reach him until, until he got to Corinth. 2 Thessalonians was probably written shortly after 1 Thessalonians, again, before he returned to Thessalonian, or Thessalonica, uh, based on Acts chapter 20 and verse 1. So in terms of dating, uh, we would date these around 50, 51 AD, 50 to 51 AD. So uh, the purpose of these books, um, we have you know, three you know, different purposes in 1 Thessalon Thessalonians and then two in 2 Thessalonians. And so in 1 Thessalonians, Paul writes to correct a misunderstanding of the parousia, that is the second coming of Christ. And we get that based on what he says in chapter 4, verses 13 through 18, and chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. So it says, But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we have believed that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring uh, with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by a word from the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with him in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. And then chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. So some thought that those who died before Christ's return would miss the resurrection, and therefore were grieving. And so he gives some general instruction concerning the day of the Lord. He says, you know, be alert, be sober, since we don't know when Christ will come again. But just so you know, Christ will come again, and those who are died before him, will rise first. So, um, and he writes to encourage the believers to stay faithful in trials, and we'll look at that on the next slide, on slide four, and then uh, perhaps to answer charges against false teachers. We see that in chapter two, verses one through ten. And so in Second Thessalonians, uh, we see uh, kind of the purpose there to correct the false teaching uh, that the second coming had already occurred. And we can look at chapter 2, verses 1 through 12 for that. And then to command those who are idle to work. 
And we see that in chapter 3, verses 6 through 13. And so moving on to slide 4, uh, some themes of the second coming. So in 1 Thessalonians, we see that an element of the second coming is mentioned in every chapter. So that would certainly be a theme of this book. An element of the second coming is mentioned in every chapter of 1 Thessalonians. Um, and the date of that second coming is unknown. So um, to give you a rundown of those, chapter 1, verse 10, chapter 2, verse 19, chapter 3, verse 13, chapter 4, verses 13 through 18, and chapter 5, verse 23. All of those are mentions, mentionings of the second coming. In chapter 4 through 16, we see that the dead will rise first. And then in chapter 5, 1 through 2, it says, Now concerning the time and seasons, brothers, you have no need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves are fully aware that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. So the day of the second coming is unknown. No one knows the date of the second coming. And looking at 2 Thessalonians, while we do not know the precise time of the second coming, we do know that the apostasy comes first, and then the man of lawlessness is revealed. And so again, we don't know the exact date, but we do know, uh, based on chapter 2, that there will be this apostasy that comes, and there will be this man of lawlessness that rises. And then in chapter 3, verses 6 through 13, <clears throat> says, Now we command you, brothers, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that you keep away from any brother who is walking in idleness, not in accord with the tradition that you received from us. For you yourselves know how you ought to imitate us, because we were not idle when we were with you. Nor did we eat anyone's bread without paying for it. But with toil and labor we worked night and day, that we might not be burdened to any of you. And so, uh, it was verse 9, It was not because we do not have the right, but to give you and ourselves an example to imitate. For even when we were with you, we would give you this command. If anyone is not willing to work, let him not eat. For we hear that some of you walk in idleness, not busy at work, but busy bodies. Now such persons we command and encourage in the Lord Jesus Christ to do their work quietly and to earn their own living. As for you, brothers, do not grow weary in doing good. And so uh, he you know, is commanding the idle. To work, and so that's a, another theme that we see in Second Thessalonians. And so the first half again, focusing on that man of lawlessness. That you know we don't know the date, but there's going to be this apostasy. Then the second part of the book being focused on uh, encouraging those uh, uh, who are idle to work so that they can eat. So uh, another theme in these books is uh, trials and persecutions. So in terms of First uh, Thessalonians chapter one. We see in verse 6 uh, that he says, And you become imitators of us and of the Lord, for you receive the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Spirit. Chapter 2, verse 14 says, For you brothers become imitators of the churches of God in Christ Jesus that are in Judea, for you suffered the same things for your own countrymen as they did from the Jews. And then chapter 3, verses 3 through 5. That no one be moved by these afflictions, for you yourselves know that we are destined for this. For when we were with you, uh, we kept telling you beforehand that we were to suffer affliction, just as as has come to pass, and just as you know. For this reason, when I could bear it no longer, I sent to learn about your faith, for fear that somehow we, uh, for somehow the tempter had tempted you, and our labor would be in vain. And so we have three mentions here of them receiving. Uh, the news uh, through persecution, receiving it in affliction, um, sharing and suffering. Um, in Second Thessalonians chapter one through verse four, we see that again. Therefore, we ourselves boast about you in the churches of God for your steadfastness and faith in all your persecutions and in the afflictions that you are enduring. So that's certainly a theme of the book: uh, standing faith, uh, or sorry, standing firm in the midst of persecution, in the midst of trials, and how Paul is praising uh, other congregations because of their testimony, because of their witness. Uh, we all go through hardship. We all go through different things. Sometimes it's hard to understand and to see and to know why. Um, but at least here we are able to see that through uh, the Thessalonian believers, through their devotion, through their uh, standing firm through trials and persecution, 
they uh, were able to be praised to other places and therefore be an encouragement to other people for when uh, persecution would come their way and when trials would come their way. We never know uh, the why of a lot of things. We never know the why of a lot of hardship. But one thing that we do know is that God can take that and use that to encourage others and press others uh, on to <clears throat> fight uh, the fight well, to fight the fight well. And so uh, looking at the outline of these books, uh, we, in 1 Thessalonians we see the outline there, we're on verse, uh, slide 6. We see the introduction in verses 1 through 10. Uh, and of that introduction we have the greeting and thanksgiving. Um, in terms of the body, we see Paul's model in ministry. We see the affection, we see the thanksgiving amidst persecution, and we see Paul's desire to visit. And so again, this just shows a great love and appreciation for the congregation, uh, which you know reminds us as well, um, you know, as a model for our love uh, and affection for our congregations that we're a part of. Um, even during hard times, even when the sheep bite, um, we're still called to to love them. And and here we see this model of this affection uh, that Paul has for them. And then verses four or chapters four and five uh, has some exhortation for believers. So there's an exhortation to sexual purity, to brotherly love, um, to comfort. You know, the dead in Christ will rise uh, to holiness in the light of the day of the Lord. Um, there's some communal exhortations. You know, in chapter five, verses twelve through twenty-two. Uh, esteem them very highly in love because their work be at peace, uh, admonish the idle, uh, be patient, help the weak, see that no one repays evil for evil, but to always do good, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, uh, and all these various community exhortations that Paul is encouraging the people to do. Abstain from every form of evil, Paul says. Then in 2 Thessalonians, we have an outline as well. Um, chapter 1, verses 1 through 12 is our introduction, so that's our greeting, our thanksgiving, our prayer for perseverance. And then chapters 2 and 3, uh, chapter 2, verse 1 through 315 is the body of the text. So we have uh, instructions about the day of the Lord. We have uh, thanks and prayer uh, to God. We have requests for prayer. Uh, then we have this warning to the idol. And then we have the conclusion in um, verses 16 through 18. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times in every way. The Lord be with you all. I, Paul, write this greeting with my own hand. This is the sign of genuineness in every letter of mine. It is the way I write. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. So that wraps up our discussion on the book of First and, Thec First and Second Thessalonians. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment, and um, please be sure to interact on our weekly discussion post. Take care, and God bless.